tell us about the sheer infrastructure and technological feat you are trying to take on here. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys very much for having me. Really excited to be here. Um, yeah, I think, you know, for space companies, you are running a business that is completely reliant upon connectivity, but yes. connectivity with space is stuck in a different era where you anticipate outages or you find very expensive and cumbersome solutions for outages in a way that would be completely unacceptable in other industrialized sectors. Um, we were actually talking to a space company yesterday that had their contact time just slipped out from under them at the last minute. And so it's really hard to think of how to deliver a reliable business to your customers under those conditions. And so uh, we're excited to really change the expectations for space companies where you have this always on, reliable, and frankly dynamic satellite connectivity um, that you would expect of your power grid or of your cell phones. Um, and so we think that this is a, a huge opportunity space and our first contribution to it is through shared infrastructure through phased array antennas, which offer a, uh, a 10X improvement on availability for satellite operators, along with a lot of other exciting features of phased you know, arrays. We explained earlier in the program that antenna arrays have not really been touched in, since the 1960s, but you know what they are. I mean, yeah. if you're ever lucky enough to drive past one and you kind of marvel still at the romance of space infrastructure. Absolutely. But, but, but I guess I guess the point is, is that for all of the uh, expansion of, of constellation that's happening above our heads, yeah. you've got to have it. What, what is different about your antenna? Like what, what, what is different about what you're offering? Yeah, I mean, the, the model that we are aiming for is something that is scalable, as you all said, that can be deployed swiftly, that can be really responsive to changing needs. Um, that can be placed in more dynamic locations. So, you know, we're envisioning a system where it could be on a rooftop or it could be in a parking lot or it could be, um, you know, in some austere location. Um, this first demo that we did, it was deployed in six hours. Um, that was our very first time bringing it out into yes. the field. So we're excited to bring that time down even further. We built our very first system in four months. Um, so we're looking to, uh, you know, bring that time frame down even further as well. And so, you know, when you think about cell tower infrastructure and that expansion globally of infrastructure that enables the cellular industry, that's the kind of scale that we need for space to accomplish all of these super exciting missions that have been talked about today um, and that we're seeing pop up day after day. Can you give us a sense of time frames? How long it took from standing start to demo and how quickly yeah. from demo to getting it out there into the world? Yeah, so for Northwood, we really prioritize bringing on the right people, the right parts and the right processes. So um, we've focused on building a team of people that are exceptionally experienced in their respective field. Uh, we've sourced parts from different corners of different industries that are traditionally used within the aerospace sector. So we, we have kind of those timeline and cost advantages. Mm. Um, and then in terms of processes, we're really focusing on a design for manufacture methodology so that we can, um, you know, build things swiftly, have things really um, consolidated into modular units um, and just approach that differently. So for us in our first iteration, you know, this was from the very beginnings of the design phase all the way through, you know, sourcing those parts, assembling those parts, testing it, and then getting it deployed. That was that four month time frame. And wow. frankly, if there weren't some persnickety board vendors, we could have been a lot faster. Okay, so is yeah. that the hold up? Is it regulatory? You come from having experienced the government side before mm. but building in the private side. What are some of the bugbears? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I think it's really the stuff that we're just trying to systematically embed in what we're doing, which is the method of engineering, um, of being designed for manufacture. We already had a 10x improvement on our assembly times based off of that first iteration that we've built. We already are able to um, improve that by 10x. And the parts that we're sourcing from, you know, our supply chain, um, you know, to date, fully U.S., um, and it's a supply chain that is uh, actually able to be really flexible in time frames. And so your customers will be SpaceX and Amazon or Defense? Well, the cool thing about the ground segment, I would say, is it's kind of like the S&P 500 of the space industry. If the market's going up, like ground is going up because um, every satellite, every different spacecraft mission requires ground connectivity. So, um, you know, whether it's a launch operator who's needing to have more flexible and responsive times um, or, you know, different pad locations or whether it's the satellite operators that are on board that are wanting to make sure that if there's, you know, a schedule slip in a launch that they can still make all of their contacts with this satellite that they've invested their blood, sweat, and tears in and a lot of money for a lot of years um, to get up there. But I think, uh, you know, the, the responsive and dynamic space missions like, you know, uh, Gokul was just speaking about a moment ago um, in terms of going to different orbits. That's a really exciting space. Uh, I think comms use cases are similar.
similarly, very exciting applications, especially when you're wanting to have lower latency, greater availability and resiliency. So, I mean, I know that's kind of a, avoiding the answer, but it's kind it of is. across across the board. <laughs>